Do you ever do what I do? When I look at a flower, or a forest, or a city, I remember the early molten earth from which this all started. How is it that such a miraculous transformation took place? For me, there's something especially fascinating about the earliest period in Earth's history as the planet formed. I like to think about how things began. The universe, the planet, our species. We know the Sun and the solar system formed out of a vast collection of swirling gases in an accretion disk or a protoplanetary disk. And we now have the technology to see these around other newly forming solar systems. And we have a good idea of the principles behind the formation of planets like ours, from the clumping together of dust and debris within the protoplanetary disk, and collisions from the masses within the emerging solar system, masses increasing in size over time, ultimately resulting in large bodies called planets. I've explored these ideas in previous videos. But then we come to something fascinating. The Earth has now formed 4.6 billion years ago. Imagine it. Out of interstellar clouds of dust and gases left over from the death of a previous star, our planet has come into existence from its primordial components. This giant collection of matter that billions of years in the future will give rise to plants and animals and large-brained primates like ourselves. It revolves around the young sun, but it's a very different planet than the one we now inhabit. I wish we had pictures. And maybe one day our telescopes will be powerful enough not just to identify exoplanets, planets around other stars, but to visualize the specific details of the beginnings of other planets in other solar systems, just as we are now becoming able to see examples of the formation of other solar systems newly forming in their protoplanetary disks. But for now, an artist's rendition can assist the imagination. In this portrait of the early Earth, we see a molten planet with volcanoes, lava flows, a less reflective surface perhaps absorbing more of the young sun's energy. And note the moon, still hot itself, and larger in the sky as it was much closer to the planet during this early time. It's hot for a lot of this period. In fact, it's molten for a very long time. It's hot for several reasons. It's hot because all the heat from the energy of these violent collisions has had less time to cool, and because there's a higher concentration of radioactive elements dispersing energy into the mix. Ongoing impacts from bodies hanging around in the early solar system added heat as well, these not yet having been fully cleared by the early planets in their orbits. Many volcanoes were releasing greenhouse gases in the form of carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor, causing the retaining of heat as well as these develop into an early atmosphere, including hydrogen sulfide. There was no free oxygen until much later. Now this is not to say that the surface of the Earth was molten throughout the Hadean Eon. In fact, there's evidence that after a time, that time not yet resolved, but somewhere between a hundred million years to several hundred million years after the formation of the Earth, that the water vapor in the atmosphere condensed to rain, forming liquid oceans. This image of the Earth, circa 4 billion years ago, toward the end of the Hadean Eon, shows an impact cratered surface from thousands of impacts of asteroids and comets still heating the surface, which by then is covered in water with emerging land masses. So for me, a beautiful current landscape stands in contrast to the molten Earth from which this all started. These remarkable changes make you appreciate the sheer magnitude of a billion years and what it can do, or four billion years. Someone should be shouting this from the rooftops. We have all seen charts of geological deep time and the tiny allocation within Earth's history to the career of our species, Homo sapiens. 
here is the obligatory chart. So I grabbed this geological time scale off of the wall where I've usually got it hanging. The time scale is off on this. So it's got it's got these three columns, but the far right column here is the Precambrian. Can you see that? Precambrian? And it represents the first four billion years of Earth's history. The Hadean, which I don't know if you can really, it's hard to see, it's a little piece at the very bottom, is actually 4.6 to 4 billion years ago. The Archean, 4 billion to 2.5 billion years ago. And the Proterozoic, 2.5 billion years ago to 541 million years ago when the Cambrian period begins. So 4 billion years on the right, and these three left columns are the last 541 million years. This small little piece, this 12% called the Phanerozoic Eon, constituting the last 540 million years, contains the lives of all the animals we're familiar with. Those alive today, and all those that have come and gone, remembered and forgotten. The Cambrian experiments, the rain, the rain of the trilobites, T-Rex and all its fellow dinosaurs, The mammals, including humans, are all restricted to this recent section of Earth's history. If we were talking about the Cambrian period, which started a mere 540 million years ago, or any time more recently, I'd have cool fossils to show you. But fully 88% of Earth's history occurred before the existence of macrofossils. These are the large sections of the pie in blue, red, and green. During most of the Precambrian, much of life on Earth was microscopic, and the macroscopic forms that did emerge fossilized poorly. In the almost 100 million years before the Cambrian, more macroscopic forms did evolve, but these forms were soft-bodied, hard to interpret, somewhat worm-like, fossilizing poorly and leaving little fossil trace. So during the eons of time before the Cambrian, time couldn't be easily divided and labeled based on the life forms associated with it. I won't argue with you if you want to say this is the most interesting eon from the Cambrian on, the Phanerozoic. Maybe that's where the important stuff, the stuff most worth remembering happened, where we happened, the myriad fossils from the Cambrian onward, attest to the magnificent inventiveness of life and of evolution. But stories are in need of beginnings, and the Earth's beginning is one of a drama and a majesty all of its own, different from that of the recent period, but important, and without which the rest of the story would not exist. In red, we see the Archean Eon, a long period of one and a half billion years, that begins some 600 to 800 million years after the formation of the Earth. The Archean is seen as beginning when the Earth became a cool, settled planet with a cool surface under oceans and atmosphere, with a hot, active interior mantle and core. The Archean is often conceived of as the first time that Earth had cooled sufficiently to allow the persistence of surface rock formations and the beginnings of continents. But there is some two-thirds of a billion years before the Archean, before the period of permanent rocks. This large segment of time, fully 17% of the Earth's history, has only an informal term in official geological classification, the Hadean named after the Greek term Hades, the underworld, the world of the dead. And in fact, the Hadean may well correspond considerably to the traditional Christian view of hell. There is a very small assembly of rocks from the Hadean, but not continents. Why? Rocks that formed 
likely melted back into the molten earth. So with no permanent rocks to study, geology is, well, let's just say harder, if you want to call it geology at all. Now, it's not entirely true that we have no surviving rocks from the Hadean period, because we do have something very useful, zircons. These are the oldest existing minerals on Earth, and they're very durable and resistant to degradation. Their cores remain intact, and they contain uranium. As uranium decays to lead at known and fixed rates, zircons contain reliable information about their age and preserve chemical information about the conditions under which they formed. The oldest zircons are over 4 billion years old, well into the Hadean Eon, and small samples have been found from Australia, Canada, and recently India. So we have small pieces of the earliest rocks, some of which appear to have formed less than 200 million years after the formation of Earth. The conditions on our planet are vastly different now. So when we speak of the Earth, in a sense, one can say that there have been many Earths. I'd like to make a series of videos about these many Earths, their conditions, and what they may have been like. I'm not necessarily proposing to do this chronologically, although that does appeal to my sense of order. But I will be doing an ongoing and occasional series of videos on the topic of what Earth was like over time, and I'll collect them in a playlist. Next time, I'll explore the Hadean in a little more detail, in particular to talk about whether the Hadean may correspond to actual physical events on Earth and in the solar system. But I'd be remiss if I didn't mention one last thing. Somewhere, sometime, within all the tumult in the early Earth was a seminal event. There is some uncertainty about whether it occurred in the Hadean or perhaps a little later within the Archean. I would venture that it's the most important event in the whole 4.6 billion year history of the planet. At some point in this early and vast time period, the physical properties of geology and chemistry assembled themselves into something new and transformative, the origin of life. Be sure to subscribe, hit the notification button. Thanks a lot for watching.